Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how to create this really cool retro text effect in Adobe Photoshop very easily. It'll only take a few minutes. If you guys don't have Photoshop yet, Adobe is currently having a promotion where all their products are 60% off for students and teachers for a limited time. So I would check that out. I'm also going to leave a link to my Discord channel where you can connect with other creators and ask me questions as well as a Photoshop playlist if you want to check out more videos like this. If you guys enjoy, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And with that being said, let's get straight into it. So right here we're on Google and I just searched up retro color combinations just because I want to really replicate the nostalgic vintage look that I'm going for. And you can see these colors aren't as like vibrant as colors you would see in logos today. There's a lot of pastel colors as well as less of vibrant colors like you can see here. You wouldn't see a logo with this type of red nowadays. So I'm just going to copy this photo onto my canvas so that I have it to reference um, so that we can sort of pick the colors as we select which layer is going to be which color. And yeah, so the first thing you want to do is download the font in the description. If you want to use this font, it's called Quicken. It's free. Um, you can use any script font you want or any vintage type of font. I just like this personally because it's slightly slanted and it just really fits the retro look. Um, so I'm just going to type in vintage here and enlarge it a little bit. So right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and just hide this layer and so that we can just see the font. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this text layer and we're basically going to apply a bunch of drop shadows. And these drop shadows are going to be different colors. So if you look at the thumbnail, there's probably like three or four colors. And so I'm going to choose from three or four different colors. And I'm basically going to just sort of stack them on top of each other. And instead of making multiple layers, I'm going to use blending options and drop shadow because that way it's organized and it's a lot easier to edit. Also, you just want to make sure the text is white just so it's a little bit more visible because you are going to be stacking multiple colors on top of each other. So it would be ideal if you could see the top layer, which is this white layer right here. So you want to right click on your text layer, go to blending options, and you want to add a drop shadow. So I'm going to just delete these because um, I created them before. I'm going to start from scratch here. So you want to press FX, drop shadow. So by default, I already have the settings set because I worked on this before this video. So for the opacity, you want to make sure it's 100. The angle doesn't really matter as long as all the drop shadow layers are the same angle. So you can actually move around the angle if you want. This might be better if you just want to sort of mess around with it. But I think around um, 80 to 100 degrees is probably the best. So I'm going to keep it at 108 right now. I might adjust it later. For the spread, you want to make it 100 just so that there's a clear like outline to the text and it's not as thin as the text. The distance is basically just the position of the drop shadow, which you basically adjusted as you adjust the angle, like if you choose to move it around like this. And the size also depends on just how big you want it to be. I'd recommend like around three to six pixels. I'll do five. And yeah, so that's the first layer we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show the other layer with the color palette so that I can sort of pick from. So we're going to go back here, right click again. So you'll notice this is a very vibrant one. And like I mentioned before, this retro look, you don't want it to be too out there and too vibrant. So even this is a little bit too vibrant in my opinion. I might even move it a little bit left so it looks like a faded red. And next we're going to add another drop shadow. But before you do that, if you don't want to copy all these settings again and uh, enter them manually for each drop shadow you create, you can just make it as a default. The next time you press drop shadow, it'll appear as those previous settings. So all you really have to do is adjust the distance um, as well as the color. So I'm going to select on the bottom uh, layer right here, move it out a little bit and just change the color. What I notice when it comes to color, um, you want to select brighter colors for the drop shadow layers in the middle. So something like yellow or bright green or something like that. So I might do this yellow. Um, but because it's so similar to the background, I might just increase the vibrance a little bit. So something like that. We're going to create another drop shadow layer. And we want to just move this one down. And we're going to select maybe a dark blue sort of look. I think the layers are a little bit too uh, thick right now. So I'm just going to move all of them in a little bit. And the last one I'm going to add is going to be that green, but maybe a darker green. And we're going to move this layer to the bottom. And I'm just going to select green right here. I also think I might just increase the size a little bit more. 
for each of them. So I might turn it to nine for each of them. And yeah, that's basically the effect. I'm just gonna zoom in here to see if the layers are even. So I think yellow might be a little bit bigger than the other ones. So this one's the yellow one. You can move it a little bit to make sure it's even. If you actually check right here, you can see the distance between each of the drop shadows and you can see yellow is much further than uh, red, which isn't a good look. So you just wanna make sure they're equal distance. You can eyeball it, of course. And there you go. I think it looks a little bit better when it's a little bit tighter before it looked a little bit too bulky. So now I can go and delete this because I don't need it anymore. And what I'm going to do next is just slightly tilt it so that it's almost like crooked. So I'm going to press Control T and just rotate it. You can also adjust the angle um, in degrees right here. So negative 5 to 10 should work. So I'm going to do negative 6 right here. And lastly, to add some texture to this, we can go on Google and search up an overlay or we can manually create it in Photoshop if you know how to do that. I'm just gonna search up grunge background or overlay. And this will basically just help add some texture to your um, text. So if I press control V, you can also press file place if you decide to download it. I'm just gonna change the blend mode to screen and maybe just adjust this overlay so it fits. And what this essentially does is it adds a subtle effect. You can also add like dust and stuff like that. But you can see here the texture looks like it's almost on paper, uh, which is sort of the goal of this. If you want to adjust the texture a little bit, you can go to curves and create a clipping mask. And if you increase the curve right here, you can see the texture stands out a bit more. So you can sort of adjust the curve as you choose. So now it's a little bit brighter and it's a little bit more visible. If you want, you can also add texture to the background um, by adding noise or something like that. So you can go to filter, noise, add noise. And there you go. So yeah, that's about it for this video. You don't have to follow exactly what I did. You don't have to use the same fonts or anything like that. So just make sure to experiment with this, find color combinations that work with you. And I would definitely recommend searching up cool color palettes because I think there's a lot more you could do with this type of effect. I've seen people apply layer styles and stuff. And also check out the Discord and Facebook groups in the description. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.